There we go. Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? Good evening. Hi, teacher. Hello, guys. I'm sorry about the delay. I had some, I had some difficulties with my connection, so I apologize. But here I am. <laughs> okay i am sorry about that guys it seems like my connection isn't so good today for some reason so I, I really apologize about that don't worry teacher okay teacher okay All right, okay. <laughs> well, so how are you guys doing today? How, how was your day? Are you tired? Are you guys happy because tired. Wednesday? <laughs> tired, yeah, okay. I can imagine and I, and I am tired too. I feel really sleepy because last night yeah. I couldn't sleep very well. So I'm really sleepy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, teacher, because I was, I was, I went the, a, a una vez, I don't know in English. Oh, okay. I see. Sepelio. Sepelio. Funeral home. ¿Sí se dice? In English, teacher. Sepelio, in English. Uh, that's an excellent question, Kathy. I, I have never thought about it. I mean, <laughs> I know I know that you can say funeral, but that is something different, I think. So I didn't know that. Let me see. ¿Cómo se dice vela? O oh, funeral. Que es... Ajá, yo, yo diría... Yo diría funeral, la verdad. Ya sí lo diría. Uh -huh. Yes. I guess. Okay, so you didn't sleep last night, I think. I can imagine. No, teacher. I see. Okay, well, no worries. We just need to wait. We just need to, uh, we just need to be here for an hour and then you can go to bed. Did you have did you have dinner already or not yet? Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. Pupusas. Pupusas. Okay. Nice. I like pupusas. <laughs> I like I like pupusas. I love pupusas. <laughs> yes, wanna... pupusas. But... Me, me eat the, the four uh, six pupusas. <laughs> I see. So, Janira, do you like pupusas too? What kind of pupusas do you like? Yes, I want two pupusas <laughs> right now. You want two? Uh, but why only two? Why don't but in maybe four, three or four? Only two. Uh -huh. why, why only two? Why not maybe three it's or enough. four? <laughs> <laughs> two is enough, T-shirt. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I think that we can eat, but not too much because uh, we can, I mean, we have to, to watch our diet, right, at the end. So, yeah. I have, a right, I have a right, uh, right now to walk uh, around my house for two kilometers. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, you have to exercise. You have to walk so you can... So you can exercise, right? Okay. But right nice. now, I I am eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! That is what happens, right? I mean, 
uh, usually when we have to do exercise, what happens is that we end up eating more, especially junk food sometimes. And that is not good. That is not good. Chocolate is, is delicious, DJ. It is. I like it too. Some people <laughs> don't like chocolate, actually, but I, I like them. But the t-shirt, but the pupusa, no is, no is, ay, se me olvida la palabra, chatarra, ¿cómo, cómo, cómo, cómo es que me, Young. cómo es que acaba de decir? Young. 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 Yes, because loroco, mora, <laughs> it has, it has vegetables, right? So it is, a, it's, it, it should be considered healthy food. Because it has vegetables at the end. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> only, only teachers, only semita is junk food. <laughs> semita is no, verdad. <laughs> Pero es rico, es rico yes. el, el café con pan. Pero. Ah <laughs> uh, <Bueno>. yes. <laughs> okay. Semita high. Bueno, eh, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Muchas gracias, por cierto, por estar otra vez acá. El día de ahora vamos a comenzar con otro tema, un tema nuevo. Ya creo que ya practicamos lo suficiente acerca del presente perfecto. Así que vamos a continuar con otro tema. Creo que probablemente ustedes ya lo vieron con el profesor Rubén. Pero por si acaso, pues lo vamos a reforzar. Ok, vamos a hacer eso para que ustedes puedan despejar cualquier duda que tengan y siempre vamos a practicar, ok, siempre vamos a hacer eso <coughs> so I don't know if you guys have any questions before we start, any questions about what we learned yesterday, any concerns or any questions about the topic for me I think that you guys are doing a good job and I want to uh, I want to congratulate you guys because you are doing an excellent job and thank you for being here one more time Because I know, like, like I always say, I know that you guys uh, probably are tired. You probably have other things to do, but you always, uh, you always make an effort so you can be for the class. So that's just amazing, guys. And I really appreciate that. Yes, teacher. So, yes. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, Katia. Sí. Muchas gracias, de verdad, guys. Yo sé que, que en lo personal, a mí, bueno, una vez que terminé de estudiar, eh, he, he intentado siempre mantenerme aprendiendo cosas, pero cuesta la verdad, especialmente cuando uno está trabajando se siente como cansado a veces uh -huh. dice no, mejor no voy a entrar y cosas así entonces, así que lo felicito la verdad a todos ok, so eh, you don't have any question guys uh, we are going to start for today so let me get ready here bueno, eh, vamos a hablar, guys, un poquito. Vamos a solamente como repasar acerca del simple past, ¿ok? Quiero solamente revisar este tema con ustedes y que podamos practicar, así como hemos estado haciendo con el presente perfecto. So I'm going to share the presentation with you guys. Give me just a second. Ok. All right, so there we go. So today, guys, we're going to be talking a little bit about this, the... Bueno, let me, let me just uh, change this. The simple past. Simple past tense. All right. So uh, what is the simple past tense? Okay. Basically, uh, the simple past tense is also known as the second form of the verb. It is used to describe an action that has taken place in the past and was completed. Okay. So the difference here between the simple past and present perfect It is that uh, with the simple past, uh, we're we talking about something that happened in the past and it was completed, okay? And we have many examples like this. Uh, I went to the market to buy some groceries, okay? So this is something that happened at some point in the past, some specific point in the past, and it ended, okay? It's not an action that has any connection to the present. It's just, just something that ended already, okay? So that is the difference. Vamos a ver. Okay, entonces lo vamos a utilizar, guys, para estas, eh, estas son las claves que vamos a tener. Okay, action that started in the past, 
and ended in the past. And also it happened at, at a specific point. Okay. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Gabriel. How are you doing today? And can, I'm fine, thank you, and you? I'm fine, thank you so much for asking. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, and can I ask you something? Sure, sure, go ahead. Uh, when I, I, when I make the platform in 5.3, uh, mm -hmm. I, I found a verb, uh, I don't know what it is, and mm -hmm. know how to, and I think, Mm -hmm. And uh, is booked. Okay. B O O K E D. Like this. Let me see. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, do you want to know what is the meaning for that? Uh huh. Okay. Eh, básicamente, esto significaría como reservado. Se, se utiliza principalmente cuando hablamos de, de un hotel o cuando hablamos en ocasiones de una cita para una consulta médica o algo así. Es hacer una, es como que ya está reservado. Son de ese tipo de términos. Hacer una reservación. Es como hacer una reservación. Bueno, eh, sí, lo puedes decir así okay. o puedes decir también, uh, you can say also, I'm going to make a reservation for the hotel or something like that. But in this case, uh, uh, sometimes uh, you, are going to, you are going to listen to this expression, like we are pretty booked out. Okay, this is a, uh, this is a phrasal verb. And basically it means that ya está reservado, está bastante reservado. Entonces se refiere a eso, al hecho de que ya se hizo una reservación. Okay, teacher, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, any question, guys, about this? Is it clear? It is a reservation, okay? That is the meaning, book or booked out. All right, <clears throat> so if you don't have any questions, we're going to continue. Okay, we're going to continue, guys. Okay, so when when do we use the simple past? We have uh, we have these uh, three situations when we are going to use the simple past. Uh, situation number one: action that started and ended in the past. Okay, just like I said. Then something that happened at a specific point in time, and also, guys. Also, the simple past, it can also be used so we can talk about actions uh, that were repeated in the past, okay? Eh, en este caso, pues, también podemos utilizar el, el pasado simple para hablar de acciones que se repitieron, eh, perdón, se repitieron en el pasado eh, en varias ocasiones, okay? No solamente es para una acción, sino que tal vez para una acción que se repitió eh, bastantes veces en el pasado. Por ejemplo, nosotros podemos decir I went to the gym almost every day last month. Okay, we can say something like this. Si ustedes se fijan, estamos hablando de algo que sucedió en el pasado empezó en el pasado y terminó pero también en este caso se repitió más, sucedió más de una vez entonces tenemos acá un indicador de frecuencia como es en este caso every day, okay? almost every day so I went to the gym almost every day last month ok, entonces tres situaciones eh, inició y terminó en el pasado y también en un tiempo específico en el pasado, y también se puede utilizar para situaciones que se repitieron eh, varias ocasiones en el pasado. Ok, so we're going to see uh, some of the examples, and I'm going to show you guys the structure. Ok, so the structure is this. Ok, so we can make an affirmative sentence. We're going to use the following 
formula. So we're going to be used, uh, you want to use the subject, which can be a noun or it can be a pronoun, okay? Just like the other uh, tenses of the verb. So it can be I, or it can be uh, Maria or anything that you want, okay? So the subject plus the simple past tense of the verb. So it can be, in this case, uh, unlike the present perfect, you need to use uh, the verb in the simple past, okay? Y luego, pues, vamos a utilizar el objeto o un complemento, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces sería sujeto, pasado simple del verbo y el complemento. So, en este caso, para esta oración, eh, nosotros vamos a utilizar el verbo forget, pero lo vamos a utilizar en el pasado simple. ¿Cómo, cómo sería acá el, el pasado simple de forget? For example, what is the simple past to forget? Forgot. 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 Very good. Yes. So I forgot. I forgot to tell my supervisor about my schedule. Okay. Olvidé decirle a mi supervisor acerca de mi calendario. Okay. Eso sería una oración de tipo afirmativa. I subject forgot simple past tense and then the complement. Can be any complement that you want. So I forgot to tell my supervisor about my schedule. Ok, vamos ahora con cómo hacemos una oración negativa. To make a negative sentence, we use the following formula. Uh, the subject, then, ok, I'm sorry about this. Uh, ok, the subject plus did not or didn't, you want to make that the contraction, plus the base form of the verb plus the, the complement, okay? So in this case, we have this sentence. Eh, en esta parte, esta, eh, la primera parte de la oración no corresponde a, al pasado, pero la, la segunda parte sí corresponde al pasado. Entonces acá, nosotros vamos a aplicar la fórmula. El sujeto sería they, y luego vamos a utilizar para hacer una oración negativa, did not or Didn't. Didn't. Okay. Uh -huh. Correct. Entonces vamos a decir acá. I think, I don't think they uh, didn't. I'm sorry. Bueno, aquí hace falta también el verbo. Ok. Aparte de esto, vamos a colocar el verbo en la forma base. Ok. Entonces acá el verbo no va a ir en el pasado, sino que el verbo va a ir en la forma base, sin modificación. Entonces vamos a colocar, por ejemplo, eh, I don't think buy. they didn't buy. Correcto. That is correct, Ricardo. Very good. Entonces, para hacer una oración negativa, esta es la estructura que vamos a utilizar. Sujeto, did not or didn't, plus the base form of the verb. Ok. I don't think they didn't buy tickets for the concert. Oh. ¿Podemos hacer otra versión? Sí, dígame, Alejandro. And this is because we have used, or we, we are using the auxiliary verb till. That is, that is past. Correct. So that's the reason that we don't have to put in past the main verb. Eso es correcto. Right? That is correct. Very good, Alejandro. Yes. So in that case, Uh, since we are using this, that is the reason why we don't change the verb because of that. Uh, sometimes, let's see, uh, sometimes people change the, the time of the verb so they can emphasize the, the idea, but that is just sometimes, okay? We don't have to do it all the time. Así que a veces tal vez lo puedan ver, digamos, el verbo cambiado, pero eso es como para hacer énfasis, pero eso no es tan común. O sea, en, solo es en algunas ocasiones. Así que nosotros lo vamos a hacer de esta forma. Sujeto más did not más la forma base del verbo. Así lo vamos a estar haciendo. Ok, eso sería para la parte de las oraciones negativas. Ahora, ¿qué sucede si queremos hacer una pregunta? Es eh, prácticamente como lo hemos venido haciendo en otros eh, tiempos del verbo. 
Entonces utilizamos la siguiente fórmula. Vamos a utilizar did at the beginning of the sentence and then the subject. Ok, vamos a cambiar, vamos a invertir el orden. Como siempre lo hacemos. Primero did, then the subject, and then the base form of the verb. Como Alejandro decía, como estamos utilizando eh, did, en este caso el verbo se mantiene de la forma base. No lo vamos a cambiar. A diferencia del presente perfecto, donde nosotros, eh, a pesar de que teníamos el verbo auxiliar, sí lo teníamos que cambiar. Pero acá no lo vamos a hacer. Entonces acá eh, tenemos Did you to work? Go, go, go. Did you go? Very good. Yes. Did you go to work yesterday? Excellent job, guys. Ok, y no olvidemos siempre colocarle el question mark at the end. Así que eso sería para esta parte de las, las preguntas. Ok. No sé si tenemos alguna pregunta hasta este punto, guys, antes de que continuemos. No yet. No questions. Ok, very good. So we are going to continue, guys. Bueno, eh, ¿qué pasa ahora si nosotros queremos decir lo que otra persona hizo o lo que otra persona dice que hizo en el pasado? En ese caso es lo que le llaman el reported speech, que es que estamos nosotros reportando lo que alguien más eh, dijo. Entonces, acá tenemos un ejemplo. Y lo vamos a utilizar de la siguiente forma. Si ustedes, eh, por ejemplo, quieren, quieren contarle a alguien más acerca de lo que otra persona hizo o lo que dijo que hizo. Un nosotros, chisme. Nosotros, ajá, un chisme, por así decirlo. ¿verdad? <risa> ok. So, normalmente decimos como, bueno, ella dijo que ella hizo esto o ella dijo que, que le gustó, o ella dijo que, así, ah, ¿verdad? Esta persona dijo tal cosa. Entonces acá, nosotros eh, vamos a utilizar más o menos la misma fórmula. Eh, utilizamos el verbo say, de decir, pero lo utilizamos en pasado. Y el verbo say en pasado es said, ¿ok? Se pronuncia como si fuera s-e-d. Así se pronuncia, said. Okay. Entonces vamos a decir, she said, en este caso eh, la oración dice, she said she something a great time at the party. Ok, entonces acá vamos a colocar nosotros el verbo en pasado también. Entonces para decir de que una persona tuvo un buen rato, que se la pasó bien, nosotros decimos, eh, that that person have a great time. So in this case we're going to say, She said she had a great time at the party. Ok, entonces estamos diciendo algo que otra persona eh, nos dijo a nosotros que hizo. ¿De acuerdo? Es como que, digamos, Carlos me diga, eh, le diga a alguien más, o me diga a mí, eh, que él hizo la tarea. Y vengo yo y le quiero contar a alguien más. Entonces yo voy a decir, he said, he uh, did the homework. Esa es la estructura. Vamos a utilizar el pronombre, luego el verbo say en pasado, luego el mismo pronombre otra vez y el verbo en el pasado de, lo que, de la acción que la persona realizó. ¿Ok? Podemos decir otro ejemplo aparte de este. Eh, he said he went to work yesterday. Ok, así vamos a estar nosotros reportando lo que otra persona eh, dice que hizo. Ok, any question, guys? Les voy a preguntar de esto después. Vamos a practicar. Vale, si no tienen preguntas, entonces vamos a hacer algo. Eh, la vez, creo que la vez anterior ustedes revisaron un video. Lo vamos a ver eh, rapidito para que podamos, para que podamos este, solamente repasar. Ahora que ya nosotros ya estudiamos toda esta parte del presente perfecto y también la parte del pasado simple. Ok, así que lo vamos a ver rapidito, ¿veis? Se lo voy a compartir. Dame un instante por acá. Y luego de esto, pues vamos a practicar, ok. Vamos a ver.
Just a second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Just a sec. Ok, entonces vamos a escuchar esto rapidito y luego pues vamos a solamente revisarlo rápido, ¿de acuerdo? Mira un momento, quiero ver el sonido. Ok, ahora sí, ahora sí. You've eaten and the restaurants that you've visited. You'll also learn how to express past experiences. For example, you'll be able to ask and answer the following question. Have you ever eaten exotic food? Before I present the structure that we'll learn in this class, I would like for you to listen to an audio program. This audio program illustrates how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully as I'll ask you questions about the audio program at the end. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Let me present the structure now. I would like to start by presenting this concept to you. The first thing is that we use the simple past for completed events at a definite time in the past. In other words, things that you did and have completed. And we use the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present time. In other words, events that you started in the past and those have continued to the present and they're not complete yet. Now, what we're going to learn in today's lesson is how the two are related. First of all, I may ask you a question, such as the one that you see on the example. Have you ever eaten snails? And your answer may be, yes, I have. And when you continue to give more information about your answer, you're going to use the simple past, and you're not going to use the present perfect to continue on giving more information because typically what you want to do is you want to express an experience that you had last week about that particular question right such as the example that we see there yes I have I tried them last month and I want you to notice the question towards the bottom it's no longer in the present perfect but it is now in the simple past and that's because we're asking questions about our um, past experience we're no longer asking questions about um, if you've ever eaten snails now the question is related to uh, the example that you see there I tried him last month and the next questions will be related to that event and so the answer to that is yes I did and then you give more information so they were delicious and so we do the same thing uh, towards the left towards towards the right side of the example of this chart have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant we start off the question using the present perfect and then you continue on and and you give either a positive or a negative answer and then in this case it happens to be a negative answer no I haven't um, and then you might give more information but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night right Um, and then the next questions that are followed here are in the simple past. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. Now that we understand the concept on how this topic is used, what I would like to do now is I would like to explain how to form questions using the present perfect. And, um, and so let me do that at this time. First of all, uh, we should learn the following concept that we're going to use have have it's an auxiliary verb and we're going to use have whenever I talk about the pronouns I you we and they and then I will use has whenever I talk about the pronouns he she 
or it, or in other words, the person, right? Um, and um, so having said this, what I would like to do now is I would like to present the structure on how to form those questions. Let me do that at this time. De acuerdo, guys. Entonces, antes de que continuemos, eh, solamente quería mencionarles algo. Esto es lo que estaba hablando ayer con algunos compañeros, que normalmente cuando hacemos una pregunta utilizando el presente perfecto como esta que está acá, y es lo que nos estaba explicando en el video, nos hacen una pregunta con el presente perfecto. Vamos a contestar utilizando el mismo tiempo. En este caso, la, el ejemplo dice, Have you ever eaten snails? And the answer, it can be, yes, I have, or no, I haven't, or no, I have not. Uh, so then, eh, luego de esto, el flujo de la conversación va a ser como, se va a cambiar prácticamente hacia el pasado, el pasado simple. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, lo que viene a continuación de la respuesta de, de, de este caso, del presente perfecto, es una respuesta en pasado simple. ¿De acuerdo? Dice, I tried them last month. Okay. Y de ahí en adelante, pues prácticamente la información que vamos a compartir va a ser siempre utilizando el pasado simple. Okay. Ya no vamos a continuar como preguntando más utilizando el presente perfecto. Si ustedes se fijan, el flujo de la conversación avanza hacia eso. Dice, did you like them? Yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. Then you can uh, just add more information on that. Like in this case, it says, yes, I did. They were delicious. So, eso les quería compartir, porque ayer estábamos practicando con eso, y les quería comentar a todos de que así lo vamos a estar manejando. Si nos preguntan con el presente perfecto, contestamos igual, y luego, pues ya vamos a continuar brindando más información utilizando el pasado simple. Ok. So, no sé si estamos claros con eso, guys, o tienen alguna pregunta. Any questions about that? Then that we should be fine. I believe that we should be just fine, guys. Okay, we have another example here. It says, have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? And it says, no, I haven't. But I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Si se fijan, es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Contestamos con el presente perfecto y luego cambia al pasado simple. Okay. Y acá pues está explicado lo que nosotros hemos estado estudiando, que son las estructuras para hacer preguntas. Ok, entonces vamos a continuar, guys. Si no tienen preguntas. In order for us to form the questions, the first thing that we should include is an auxiliary have or has, as I mentioned, if we follow this rule, we learned that we're either going to use have if I talk about I, you, we, or they, and we use has whenever we talk about the third person. So in this case, uh, we're going to use have, um, and then this follows the subject, then this follows the word ever, and then the verb in its past participle form, and then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever eaten snails? And by the way, um, this word here is a frequency adverb, so sometimes you can remove it, um, and um, the question will still be correct, but in this case, we want to use it. Have you ever eaten snails? Um, and what I mentioned was that you can either answer this question with a positive response, such as yes, I have, or this could be a negative response, such as no, I haven't. And so just so that we can see clearly what's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the colors at this time. All right, there we go. So have you ever eaten snails? And it's the same thing um, for our next question. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? So let's do that one as well. So I'm going to use have. This follows the subject. And then we're using the word ever. So we use the verb to be in this case in the past participle form. And then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? And then once again, the answer to that particular question can be, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And what I would like for you to notice now is how we respond to that kind of question, right? I mentioned that we can either have a 
positive response to that question, either yes I have or no I haven't. And then this next sentence, we're typically going to follow with a simple past statement. And the reason is because um, I'm going to talk about my experience in the past. So in this case, I'm going to say I tried them last month. So this statement here basically talks about that past experience that I had, which is related to this topic, right? So have you ever eaten snails? And my, my answer to that question is, yes, I have. I tried them last month. So I, I'm using the simple past. And um, now the next questions that you see there, which is what I mentioned earlier, are in the simple past. Did you like them? Now all of the questions are related to this event that you see here, right? It's no longer this question that you're answering. You're answering the next question. I tried them last month. So you want more information about this event from last month. Did you like them? And as you can see the answer, yes, I did. They were delicious. And we can see the same example towards the right side of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Well, the answer to that question is no, I haven't. But I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. The next question that is asked here has to do with this answer. I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Oh, did you go alone? Um, this question refers to the person going to that Thai restaurant last night. And he answers, no, I went with some friends. So as you can see, we use a combination of both the present perfect and the simple past to talk about things that you either started in the past, continue to the present, and then when you want to go into talking about a past experience, that's when we use the simple past. So let's see if we can do a couple of more questions. Um, have you ever tried sushi? How would you respond to that question? Well, typically most people have, so most people will say, yes, I have. And so tell me about that experience, okay? So if you're going to tell me about that experience, then that's when we're, whenever we're going to use the um, simple past. So how would you tell me about that past experience? Well, have you ever tried sushi? Yes, I have. I um, ate sushi last month. Oh, sorry. I ate sushi last month. Oh, really? And then whenever you start talking about that past experience, the next questions that will follow will be in the simple past. Did you like, did you like it? Now, how would you respond to that? Well, you can, you can respond to that by answering yes, I did, or no, I didn't. I thought it was great. Or, I didn't like it. And the last thing that I would like for you to do is to answer the following questions. Have you ever been to a picnic at the beach? Have you ever eaten Mexican food? Have you ever visited Europe? Have you ever eaten exotic food? Um, as you answer these questions, what I would like for you to do is to answer the question with either yes, I have, and then I want you to tell me that past experience. So similar to the examples that we see on the chart, Let's say the question is, have you ever eaten Mexican food? And let's say that your answer is, yes, I have. Then you will tell me where and how did you like it? So as you can see, what I'm trying to get to is that you give me your response and then you give me information about that particular past event. <clears throat> De acuerdo. Ok, guys. Eh, entonces, no sé si tienen alguna duda con respecto a esto. Creo que ya lo habían visto una vez. Entonces, lo que me gustaría que hagamos ahora es que podamos practicar acerca de esto y que intentemos agregar, en este caso, vamos a combinar las dos cosas que hemos estudiado hasta ahora. 
¿Ok? Ustedes hacen preguntas utilizando el presente perfecto. Respondemos a esa pregunta. Y luego vamos a agregar la parte del pasado eh, simple. ¿De acuerdo? Eso me gustaría que hagamos. Para que podamos ya extendernos un poco más en, con respecto a esto. Así que eh, la conversación va a ir por este rumbo. Empezamos con el presente perfecto. Respondemos igual. Y luego vamos a dar más información utilizando el, presente, el pasado simple. Como en este caso, ¿verdad? Eh, pueden utilizar estas preguntas o pueden utilizar cualquier pregunta que ustedes gusten. ¿De acuerdo? Así que vamos a practicar por un momento, guys. Lo voy a colocar en los grupos para que puedan practicar. Vamos a ver. So here we go, guys. Are you ready? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher. Thank you. So here we go, guys. We're going to practice. You are going to uh, work on this so we can finish with the topic. Okay, this is the topic for today. So here we go. Just, um... <laughs> <sighs> How you ever? Uh, how have you ever been to picnic? Uh, which? No, uh, other is. Uh, how you ever uh, visited? Visited uh, Europe. Um, I don't know. Can you say other 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 question? Hi, Carlos, how are you? Hi. Hello, Carlos. Hi, how are you? Very well. I'm fine. And you? Very well. Um. Yes. Um. Mm, other. Example, no. how you are in Matia? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I, I, yes, I, have. I uh -huh. did uh, you like them? Did you like them? Yes, I did. Okay. Do you, Carlos, uh, have you ever eat, eat, eaten Mexican food? Um, repeat, please. Have you ever eaten Mexican food? No. Entonces, eh, decía que, que en el presente simple, pues podíamos dar la segunda versión. Yes, I have. I treat. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. How are you doing? Um, Any questions, guys? Um, yes. Uh, the answer is in past perfect, right? Uh, the answer. The question. The question. 
The mm -hmm. question is in past perfect. And the yes. answer is into part. First is a perfect in past perfect, and then we use a simple past. Mm -hmm. Yes. For so add more information to the answer. Mm -hmm. That is correct, Anna. So basically, what so we okay. need to... uh, So can I say, have you ever tried sushi? Mm -hmm. And the answer can be, yes, I have. Yes, I have, and... but I don't like them. Or oh, I, I don't like it. Or oh, didn't, because it's a simple pass. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Ah, yes, I didn't like it. <laughs> Esa es su respuesta. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, basically, Ana, uh, <laughs> the first uh, question will be with the present perfect, okay? Present perfect. And then the first answer is going to be with the present perfect too. And then after that, uh, you can add mm -hmm. more information using the simple past. So you're doing a good job, guys. Yes. In simple past. In the simple past. Okay, yeah. test it. Go on. Yes, I have. But no, no, te voy a dar. Sorry, but no uh, he didn't like me. Can I say? But he didn't. Like no, you need to say, but I didn't like it. Like ah, it. like it, like it. I uh, didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Like, like it like when it. it's sing singular, right? And then mm -hmm. when it's plural. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Have you ever danced uh, cumbia, Anna? Yes, I have. I dance cumbia in Christmas. Okay. It's correct, teacher. Mm -hmm. You can say, uh, you can say, Anna, in this case, I danced cumbia last Christmas. Last, last Christmas. Last Christmas. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, the worst. Mm -hmm. The worst. Yeah, the worst. Mm -hmm. And and then, did you like it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. In my case, it's like two enchiladas. Mm. Or soup. Or soup. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And... Mm. Have you ever visited, visited <laughs> other country? <laughs> I'm... I'm... No, I haven't. I have. Have you ever said that ever? Exotic food. <laughs> yes, I have. I, I yes, have. Seria. Yes, I have. Yes, I had. I I ate um, in Mexico. I ate. Por eso de la segunda. Ah? Eso de la segunda. No. Te amo. Then Hola, have you eaten exotic food? Como si ha comido comida exótica. When ah, I... no, yo estaba en la de visitar Europa, que si alguna vez hemos visitado Europa. Ah. Uh -huh, en eso estaba. I don't, I don't have it. No, I no. haven't. No, I haven't. No, no, I haven't. Okay. Quiero ver qué más se podría agregar ahí. Yo nunca lo he hecho. Pero por ahí. Ahí. No se puede poner que, pero hay visited. 
pero ver ay, como ay, ya ustedes digan Guatemala. Yeah, I, I travel to Guatemala. Guatemala. Sí. I travel to Guatemala o, o maybe Costa Rica, América mm -hmm. Central. But in, in Europa, in, in Europe, no. Maybe to Guatemala. Comida exótica. Uh -huh. Yes, I have. And I, I have. I ate uh, chapulines in Mexico City. <laughs> I guess. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Chapulines. 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 Yes, it's, it's, it's the light to yes, I... las pescaditas aquí en El Salvador. Oh, ok. <laughs> pero, Very pero good. Sí me dio... Yo pensé que iba a decir los tacos de tarántula porque en México venden eso. No. Ay, no. <laughs> But este yeah, fui yes, I visited I um, como le llaman zócalo en México en la uh, no sé cómo dice los vendedores cargan las bolsitas así como mm. como si fuera pocor y la yeah. venden así yes, <laughs> y a mí y a mí me hicieron comerme <laughs> uno sería <laughs> yes, I ate. ¿Cómo, se, ¿Cómo dice el nombre? Ate. Ah, chapulines. Chapulines. Sí, chapulines. Chapulines son like to grillos. Como los grillos. Mm. Parecido, yes, como grillos. Ajá. Yes, pero okay. le, le llaman chapulines. So, any. How are you doing, girls? Do you have any questions for me? Any. Anything? But, bueno, no sé si lo estamos haciendo bien, como usamos <laughs> estas preguntas y damos información adicional para usar el pasado. Uh -huh. Así es, comprendí que era. Sí, correcto, correcto. Lo están haciendo bien, lo están haciendo bien, Jenny. Y con podemos respecto... leer una si quieren para ver. Sí, estaría muy bien, sí. por favor. Utilizamos la de Have you ever been to a picnic at the beach? Y nosotros pusimos, yes, I have. I went there last year. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Y las demás también han sido llevadas. Con esas preguntas hemos recaudado esa información. Very good. Very good. Very good job. Yes, you're doing a good job, girls. And when it comes to the the question that you had about the capulines, uh -huh. sometimes, sometimes, I, uh, I mean, if that is the name of the dish, sometimes you don't need to translate it because that is like the name, like when they say tacos, I mean, they don't mm -hmm. change it. So, mm -hmm. Or pupusas, right? They, uh -huh. they don't change it. So if capulines, the, if that is the name, you can just say it like that. People may ask like, what is a capulín? What is capulines? No, no capulín, chapulines. <laughs> chapulín <laughs> or chapulín. Uh -huh. Like okay. the, the program, chapulín colorado. <laughs> ah, como el programa, okay. <laughs> sí, uh -huh. entonces a veces Pero... no es necesario. A veces no es necesario traducirlos, a veces es como si es un nombre propio, por así decirlo, lo podemos dejar así, ¿verdad? Sí. Pero, pero si es una, digamos, un pescado o algo así, ahí podemos sí, decir sí. fish o algo así. Ajá. Yo no, pero no, yo le decía, like to, así, like to, como el sabor es como parecido a lo que nosotros le decimos pescaditas, sí. como unos pescaditos sí. tostados que se venden aquí. Right. Y una pregunta okay. en la segunda, uh -huh. en la de... Have you ever eaten Mexican food? Pusimos, yes, I have. I ate, pero ¿cómo sería taco de birria? Tacos o birria. Así sería, ¿o cómo? Uh, I would say something like, yes, I have. I had a, I'm sorry. Yes, I have. I ate uh -huh. tacos de birria. Just like that. Así sería. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfecto. Ajá, porque es eso de que las comidas o los nombres de calles o cosas así no se... No se cambian, ¿verdad? Correcto. Eso se mantiene. Correcto. Se mantiene en cualquier lugar, pues, o sea. Ajá. Así es, Jenny. De hecho, por ejemplo, muchas calles en Estados Unidos o cosas así tienen nombres como en español, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, eh, San Diego o cosas así. Entonces ellos no le cambian el nombre. Solamente dice San Diego y así. Entonces es lo mismo con la comida en algunas ocasiones. 
libertad. Se le trabó el profe. Se quedó. Parece que sí se le trabó el profesor. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that, Gorge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, teacher. Hello, girls. I'm sorry about that. Yes. yes, I'm sorry about that. Like I mentioned before, I'm having some difficulties with the internet since yesterday. I don't know what is going on. So I apologize for that, guys, girls. But we're going to do something. I think that, uh, well, I have to go to another class. So we will have to finish with the class for today. So I'm going to close the rooms. Okay, so we're going to go back to the to the session again. Jesus. Oh man, I don't like this. <laughs> 